<coughs> Jacksonville's Water and Sewer Advisory Committee meeting will now start. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Everybody that's watching on G10, we appreciate it. First item on the agenda here is call to order, which we just did. Adoption of the agenda. Do we have any corrections or any? No corrections. Okay, I'll entertain a moment. <clears throat> a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's. I make a motion that we approve tonight's agenda. Okay, we'll I have will a motion. second it. We have time to second it. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. Motion's carried. All right, approval of minutes from the September 10th, 2015. Do we have any corrections? We have no corrections. I'll entertain a motion. To motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, raise your right hand, please. Okay, motion carried. Greg, we're going to have an update on the current capital projects, and you sound like you're the one that's going to give it to us. Yeah, you got me tonight. So. <laughs> But uh, uh, thank you. Uh, good to be here. I think it's been a while since I've been here. Uh, so uh, good to be back. Uh, and indeed, tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, talk about uh, capital projects that are active projects during this fiscal year, fiscal year uh, 16, which uh, runs from uh, July 1st of 15 to June 30th of 2016. We're going to talk about uh, uh, projects that we've completed, projects that are underway, and these are what we call capital improvement projects or CIP projects. And then at the end, we're just going to spend a few minutes talking about uh, what's next uh, for uh, us when it comes to CIP projects. You know, we're getting ready to enter into the CIP planning process for FY17, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, What's upcoming for y'all when we get into the 17 uh, uh, projects? So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, looking at uh, some of the, or looking at the projects that we've completed when it comes to sewer projects. And you'll see right there, uh, there were uh, three projects um, that we've completed. The first one being Memorial Lift Station. Memorial Lift Station is uh, a lift station that is uh, right off Memorial Drive, as you would expect, sort of to the rear of a doctor's office. And what we did there was that we replaced an old, what I'll call, Cantex-style lift station. <coughs> the, uh, that type of station is a station where somebody who wants to work on the pumps or mess with the controls has to basically go down in a can below ground and work on those pumps because the pumps take the wastewater from an adjacent wet well and suck it through and then pump it on down the line. It was an old station, uh, had some maintenance problems, and so we replaced it with... Uh, a submersible sewer type lift station and we've got it as completed there's still a little tiny bit left to do but uh, it's for all intents and purposes done next project we're going to talk about is the Brookview Force main replacement and that is a project you'll see on the screen where I, uh, there is a an oval there that is a force main that extends over a wetland area. It's uh, near the New River and the force main is on piles. It sits up you know above the wetland uh, in that little run of water on piles and it became a project because at one point uh, we were working at the Brookview pump station. We were upgrading that station and during the course of that work we noticed that that force main was moving and uh, that's not a good thing particularly when you're over a wetland area. And so Pete uh, and his staff undertook some steps to stabilize the force main. They basically went out and uh, they uh, restrained uh, the joints for most of the pipes that uh, were out over the water. 
and uh, we put an air release valve in and that gave us some time to sit back and sort of look at uh, what are we going to do next because <clears throat> again it was it was a uh, was uh, a bit old and um, it uh, we had concerns about the piles and so the first thing we started thinking about doing there was actually uh, directional drilling under the uh, the marsh there basically putting the force main underneath the ground below the the wetland below that, that run of water there and uh, we seriously thought about that but uh, what happened was you know we got into the budget and it looks like it looked like to us that that project was going to be about six hundred seven hundred thousand dollars and plus we had some easement issues we had a little bit of trouble with uh, procuring the easements that we needed so we started rethinking the project and we commissioned a valuation of the force main and more specifically the piles um, and their uh, connecting hardware and uh, what that that study showed us was that uh, in general the piles really weren't too bad that uh, what we needed to do to preserve them though was to protect them at the water mud line you know right where the pile goes into the ground or where it's touching the water we also needed to protect the piles from rain from the top we also needed to replace some of the hardware and we still needed to brace a few of the joints and so this is the project that we came up with and so right here what we ended up doing was we indeed uh, supported we added some piles there was a couple locations where the the piles in the ground were subject to moving and so what we did was we added a couple more piles and bridged across to stabilize those piles and that was just at a couple of locations another couple of locations what we did was there's a joint right there we restrained that joint so it wouldn't move that was just a couple of locations at several locations, remember I talked about rainfall? What we did was we added a metal cap where the metal cap was missing or had uh, uh, corroded to prevent rainwater from basically hitting that cap and working its way down into the pile and rotting it. Are those wooden piles? Or They're wooden concrete? piles. Okay. <coughs> wooden piles. Then what, we, then what we did was a, a fair number of piles out in the wetland area, we wrapped we wrapped them with sort of what I'll describe as sort of a rubber type wrap right there where the pile goes into the ground Oops, right there to protect it against you know the contact with water and then you know the at the wetland area a little bit of rise of water and fall of water in contact with air and then in the water there were several piles where what we did was we wrapped them with what I'll call is a uh, sort of an epoxy type wrap uh, a composite type wrap and we ended up uh, with a project that uh, essentially is going to extend the life of that force main another 15 20 years for construction costs of about two hundred and nine thousand dollars versus the six to seven hundred thousand dollars we were looking at before so that was a brookview force main replacement those <coughs> excuse me those piles What's the normal life on a pile in the given logic uh, today? It has a lot to do with um, um, what it's exposed to, but at one point I did a little bit of research. I'm, I'm thinking 30 years, somewhere in that range. And these are how old now? I think they're maybe 15. So we're looking given or take in 15 years those piles will either have to be replaced or a different design 15 20 years that's what we're thinking and you'll replace them again with wooden or will you go with one of the other materials that a pile I can be don't know at this point uh we could end up directional drilling that way we, you know we don't have to worry about that uh, you know recycle Another project that we finished, uh, I think late May, was barn, what we call the Barn Jarman Sewer. And as you can see, it involved replacing the sewer along a short section of Barn Street and all along Jarman Street. And the reason we did this is because during heavy rains right in here, 
we tended to see sewer manhole overflows. And as a matter of fact, there's a local engineer that I talked to once. He said, you know, I've lived here all my life. And he said, when I was a kid growing up, he said, I can remember that, that whenever we had a hard rain, that those manholes overflowed. And so uh, what we did was we said, well, let's do a little bit of modeling. And with our sewer model, we modeled it, and the model told us that, we, that the lines were undersized and that we needed to upgrade it to a 12-inch. <clears throat> and that's exactly what we did. And as part of that project, we also repaved the road. And that was a project uh, uh, that, again, we completed, I think, in late May. And since that time, I keep asking Pete, and he's telling me that uh, those manholes have not overflowed. And we've had some pretty good rains here lately. So. I know they used to do it mm -hmm. bad. Oh yeah, anytime we get ready to have a big rain event, Pete would always go set a set a, a, a bypass pump over there just to be safe. Because at the Northwest Fire Station used to, when you had a heavy rain and you saw that, you better run to the bathrooms and put the plugs in the bottom if you didn't, you'd get flooded. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. clears throat> um, <clears throat> Then another, com uh, what we're going to talk about are on the water side, the projects that we completed. Uh, the first one that you'll see there is something called Zach Circle Sophia Drive. That is right off of Marine Boulevard. It's sort of, I don't know, about halfway between where Onslow Drive and uh, where Gum Branch hit, uh, hit uh, Marine Boulevard. Um, and we completed that project the uh, end of January. Uh, we completed it for roughly $307,000 when it came to construction. And what we did was we upsized uh, the two inch lines uh, along those streets uh, up to six inch side, size. And we added a couple of fire hydrants. And we also re repaved the streets while we were there because we were basically working on portions of both street and uh, we didn't, we didn't work along the complete street, but we worked along a significant portion of it such that we felt like it was, we should go ahead and repave the street instead of have a big patchwork out there. And then we had another project that we completed. Uh, it's the uh, FY14 water line replacement. And it involved a, a lot of courts. Um, and in, in this, in these places, we undertook this project. These, these particular courts came up on our list because they were uh, showing up as requiring heavy maintenance. They're, each one of them had an old two-inch galvanized water line and there was uh, a work history that indicated that they really needed to be replaced. Uh, we did upsize one of the two-inch lines to four-inch and uh, we recently completed this project uh, with a minor punch list. The minor punch list is, uh, uh, remains to be done, but it's, it should be done in the next couple weeks. And we did this project for roughly $80,000. So those are the projects that we've completed. So what we're going to talk about now are projects that are in one uh, stage or another. And you can see right there, we've got a total of six, uh, six water projects, one that uh, we're sort of in the investigation phase, four that we're in the design phase, and one that's in the construction phase. The first one that you see there, that one's in the construction phase, and it's just about done. I just didn't feel like it, we could take it off the, the list and say it was done. It should be done in about 30 days. And it's uh, Greencrest Circle. Uh, Greencrest Circle is uh, right off of Richland's Highway. Uh, it's past, you know, it's sort of out a little ways. It's past Onslow Memorial Gardens, and if you're heading out of town towards Richland's, it's on the, on the left. Um, <clears throat> And what you'll see there is in the blue, what we did, and I'm gonna go over it, is right here, this was two inch. We, we upsized that to six inch. And this two inch here, we replaced with two inch because it also had, a, had uh, maintenance concerns. And then at the same time, what we did was we, because we created a loop here, improved the pressure and flow a little bit, we added a fire hydrant right here. We added a fire hydrant right here. 
we added a fire hydrant roughly right here and added a fire hydrant roughly right there. And again, that project's about done. Uh, the construction costs uh, roughly $151,000. How does the fire hydrant improve pressure? The loop, and flow. The, the loop improved. What I said was that this was two inch right here. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we created a complete six inch loop that improved the pressure and flow. And uh, this place was, once we did that, you know, when we did, undertook the project, we realized that this place was lacking in fire hydrants. So once we felt like we could establish a decent fire flow, it's not the greatest, but it's good enough, we went ahead and put these fire hydrants in. Is that in the city limits? <coughs> no. So how did we get there, do you know? Do you remember, anybody remember? I don't know. Okay. There's a few that are outside <coughs> of city limits that we serve, and that's one of them. Those people will get better insurance rates now, won't they? Is there a hydrant on Dressler? No, because that's two inch line. Okay. Here's one that uh, I would say is in the in right now in the investigation phase. It's called the Blue Creek School Road Water Line. Uh, extension and I'm sort of going to flip back and forth between those between this and the other slide maybe and what this involves is extending a water line from near uh, right here is the, uh, the NCDOT district offices out in here somewhere right under the w. yeah right under the W right there and this is the uh, interchange and um, our water line ends right in here. And what we're looking at, so it comes, we got the water lines that come down here. So what we're looking at, if you follow the blue line, is extending a water line down 17, uh, taking a turn and going up Blue Creek School Road. And you can see right here, this is sort of the target area. Uh, this area we are, um, seen as a uh, area where there could be light commercial uh, or light industrial commercial development. And when this CIP project was put together, you know, I sat down and did some hand calculations and my hand calculation said that we can do this and when we do that, we're going to be probably right on the edge of having sufficient pressure and flood. But again, they were hand calculations, um, and, and doing it the old school way. Did not have the benefit of our, our, our hydraulic model. So the, the first step, the investigation part of this, is to actually sit down and use our model to say, can we provide sufficient pressure and flow out here? Well, once we got into it, though, we got to thinking... <coughs> And we said, this is, again, this is the area down here. We have some, on this side of the river, you can see this little, this little dashed line that runs all through here, sort of. On, on this side of the river, we have some places where the pressure is not as uh, good as we would like. Uh, and Joe can verify this, maybe. Down in uh, Georgetown area, we get, uh, from time to time, uh, we get, we may get some uh, complaints of uh, low pressure. And out in this area where we're having, you know, significant development, Yop Road area where Walmart is, uh, where Lowe's is, we can get uh, some um, complaints. As a matter of fact, you'll see a note right here where, uh, uh, Walmart installed their own little booster pump system to make sure they had adequate pressure. What we find is if we keep the downtown tank relatively full, 15 feet. over 15 feet, then we, we, we tend not to have those kind of complaints. But, you know, um, we sort of felt like that, you know, that's a pretty good strategy, keep your tank up, but maybe we need to delve into this problem a little bit further. So 
we were already doing this model, going to do this modeling down here. So now what we've said is, well, why don't we just look at this whole area holistically? And that's where we are right now is we are just now getting ready to start doing some comprehensive modeling of this larger area from uh, the, the river west, although if you're on western, I guess it's the river east, um, that um, um, is going to help us sort of plan our future. Do we, do we put... Um, storage tanks out here? Do we put a storage tank out here? Do we put a, a water booster pump station? Do we create some loops? What do we do? And so that's where we are right now. This project has sort of morphed into a larger planning project and then we will hopefully come back once we've finished our larger planning project and uh, move towards um, putting in the water line. What's a water booster? Water booster pump station? Mm -hmm. It's just basically you take water from a low pressure side, you run it through a pump, it spins it up, and it spits it out at a higher pressure. Do we have those? Uh, we do not have a booster pump station. We don't want we, Oh, that's right, we do. We, we have, have uh, yeah, we do. But that's we just one. to fill the commons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excuse me, Wally. Well, yeah. uh, what's driving the uh, target area that we originally talked about since it's not developed and that is ETJ, right? That is ETJ. We have that overall larger area. We actually have sewer that serves that area and we've looked at potential annexation, voluntary of course, um, of that area and basically development pressure. So, and if that, if that line were extended, that's one of the projects that we would look at funding with um, our facility fees. I see. <clears throat> would yeah. another water tank that area not help? That's what we're thinking. We're, we're, we're halfway expecting that once all the modeling is said and done that we might end up need, seeing that we need to sort of plop a tank out that way somewhere. Oh, the closest, closest one you do have is the one downtown. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, the downtown is sort of far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there's another project that I'll say that's uh, I'll say it's under design. It's the uh, it's called Rehabilitate Black Creek Wells, and this actually involves two wells. Uh, they're wells number one and well number five. <clears throat> and, and when it comes to well number one. What we're looking at there is uh, the first bullet that you see there, the new electrical equipment, pumps, and motors for that well. When it comes to well number five, the second bullet applies. We're looking, looking at rehabilitating the existing casing. While we're doing this, though, we're collaborating with the Regional Water Resources Group to make sure that you know we use these wells in, in, as best as we can. And by that, what I mean is, there was actually some discussion of whether we should, instead of rehabilitating well five to get drinking water out of it, to rehabilitate it and make it a monitoring well, to help with the monitoring of the region. And so the Regional Water Resources Group um, is working with a hydrogeologist who's preparing a report to look at you know regionalization and how we best utilize our wells and so what we've been doing is we've been waiting on that uh, report before we actually make a decision as what to do with well number five and uh, what uh, I understand is that the advanced copy of that report is more or less saying that uh, no, we probably shouldn't take well five and turn it into a monitoring well. We should probably keep it as a well that produces drinking water. So with that uh, out of the way, I guess we'll, when will we get the final report? You know? I don't know. We, we have, we're working with GMA, um, which is Dr. Sproul, and um, the, we are installing two Black Creek monitoring wells, but they're in Burton Park. We're working with um, Omwasa and the county to do that. Um, mm -hmm. It's my understanding that um, they've already agreed to the area the wells will be constructed and 
Dr. Sproul is actually moving forward with the specs so that we can get those monitoring wells um, constructed. Um, it does leave some questions, however, um, based on those monitoring wells of whether we would actually be better off just to abandon well one or well five or a combination of the two and relocate a Black Creek well to somewhere else. So we're not sure where that's going to lead us yet, but we're working on that in direct conjunction with um, the Water Resources Group and the state. Are, are well one and well five fairly closely co-located? Yes, they're on Wells Road. So we have one through five down the road. You can see well one on 258. It's way on the road. And we, that one hasn't been used for years. So you can drill into Black Creek as long as you stay within your allowable amount of water? That is correct. Okay. And that, Dr. Sproul's thinking that um, based on that, it may actually be better to locate somewhere else so you actually spread the well filled out a little bit and don't mm -hmm. put two more wells right back in the same spot they were. So more to come. Okay. That's the last bullet. Another project, this project is a project that's under design. I would say the design is about 90% complete. This is uh, the US 17 North Water and Sewer Extension. And what this project involves is um, this right here, you can see is Piney Green Road. This is US 17. And a few years ago, um, a water line and sewer line was put, you know, right through here that extends behind Stevenson Automotive and continues on out to Ramsey Road. Um, Wolf, Wolf, Wolf Swamp Road, Road, I'm sorry, Wolf Swamp Road. And what this project involves is now picking up, extending from those water and sewer lines a line right to the edge of Stevenson and going across 17 and turning and going to roughly right here, just a little short of Drummer Kellum Road. And it, and with the sewer being set deep enough that if we ne want to or need to, we can continue on Drummer, past Drummer Kellum uh, at a future date. The point of this project, quite honestly, right now, is to serve this parcel right here. It is a, uh, it is a, uh, it is going to be a, a commercial subdivision, and they have design plans that they're working on for uh, that commercial subdivision. I think they've already got one business that's planning to be in there. Now, the way that we're setting this up is a specialist assessment district. So we're going to recover our money, the funds that we expend to extend these water and sewer lines through a special assessment. So anytime somebody connects to the water or sewer line, they pay their pro rata share of the cost of extending those water and sewer lines based upon the amount of sewer they're going to discharge or the amount of water they're going to take. And so that's uh, that project, again, is about 90% uh, uh, designed. The easements for it are about to be recorded. Where's the city limit there? Back up there in the Empire? Yeah, but I think that's where it's on. North Green Town Center is in city limits, yeah, this, I believe. Yeah, this is, I believe, uh, was annexed. Uh, I think all of this is, and Stevenson also. Stevenson, yeah. I believe, is in, is in mm -hmm. city limits. The upper Stevenson or the lower? I think the upper, I believe. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure though. But I, I, I'm. This the Bailey property has been annexed. Can we find out? And that's when those water and sewer lines was put in. They were planning a residential they development were, up there, weren't they? And the, it was the Bailey, built. they were. They were planning an apartment complex mm -hmm. and also commercial development. They were planning. I don't know big box stores or something like that. Uh, the, uh, the apartment complex, quite honestly, uh, fell through, mm -hmm. but there is, uh, I, I believe there's movement to land some commercial uh, 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 
businesses, some commercial development on that parcel, uh, probably when uh, Piney Green gets completed. <clears throat> right here, they're already uh, getting ready to start a uh, Kangaroo Express. Across the street from Kangaroo from the Express? Other yes. Okay. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. The city put in all those water and sewer lines, but there's no tenants for them yet. Who paid for that? We did. Mm -hmm. well, I think the North Marion Town Center was put in as part of their development. Yes, it was. What we did was we ex we participated. We extended uh, the water line to just across the street from them on Pine and Green Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, I think we participated a uh, in the in the pump station too, maybe. But uh, by and large, the expense was theirs. So they paid to have all that water and sewer line put in and never built. Well, you know, think about it. Stevenson's on it right now. Yes, Stevenson's tied into it. Yeah. How far does the existing line go now up 17 North? For the property you're looking at on the left side. Can y'all? I'm not able to. Remember. There it is. Are you talking about the one that we're getting ready to extend? It will go to right here. Where is it now? Uh, water right now is in uh, back over in here. Here. Yes. And it. I think it also comes down, I think it's in, comes down Empire a little ways, but not yeah, quite the 17. Line. Yeah, small line. All right. Is Empire in the city limits? Yes. 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 So the next street is ETJ County, right? So if we go into the Harry Brown family LLC area, we'll have a gap between, and I'm assuming Harry Brown wants that, family wants that, uh, voluntary annexation correct yes so you'll have the city out there with a gap between it and the Empire being county land on that side of the road yes yes on that side of the road is that side of the road now serviced by on yes 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 but there's not sewer okay I'm but just, they are served water by on didn't we have a similar thing with the country club years ago where everything around it was city and the county had part of country club and then we had to get country club and that's why they pay to you so you can pay Onwasa for their water? They still, they, Onwasa still has country club in Sunset Acres. Okay. I'm just saying we're setting ourselves up for that same situation. Is that what I hear? No, this situation, the, well, Every, at least the, people that are tied in would be city customers. Right, but um, between that city self-annexation, voluntary annexation of the Harry Brown and Empire would be outside the, does that cause a problem for the development of the system? When you start having holes in your area that you're servicing, I'm just repeating what I thought I heard at meetings a year ago here about why we don't want to have spot annexation. I'm looking at Wally, not Greg. I understand you're, you're the <laughs> engineer. Sure. Yeah, I'm looking at the guy that's going to be telling me <laughs> a well, year or I two mean, from now what the problems are. I mean, are at have. some point when, I think that's Humphrey and I don't remember who else the property owners are on the is that the northern side of mm -hmm. um, New Bern Highway? Um, at some point when that develops, if they want city services, they'll have to annex. And then, yes, there will be a discussion of whether... But if they don't... Those they are all private homes they now, aren't they? Yes, right now they're single-family homes. Yeah. But I guess what I would say is we... And I think you've heard this before, particularly from city management, that as you go down 17... We sort of see the 17 quarter as the next growth quarter. And, you know, this and this, you know, loop like this, that, that sort of sets us up that if, should we want to be the provider for the 17 quarter, 
we are, you know, we are we are starting to to lay the groundwork for that. They haven't even gotten that all four lane yet. 17? From here to Newburn. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to go <laughs> quite that far. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you are, but if you're talking about a commercial border. <laughs> Well, we're not going to annex. And 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 I will tell you that uh, we are actually going to sit down um, and start looking at the 17 quarter and what we think the growth might look like when it might occur, and start uh, looking at. Uh, uh, if we want to go there, what do we need to do when it comes to water and sewer beyond, you know, start laying laying out this this first little bit? Greg, how does for the, that section of private residences that you said are serviced by Onwasa with water but not sewer? How does that water get to them in that one little group? Is it coming up Piney Green? Uh, are you talking about this right through here? Uh huh. I, I believe, from yeah, it comes from Drummer Kellum. There's a, I think there's, there's a, there's a, there's a water line. Water tank on Drummer Kellum. Also. Yeah, th yeah. There's a water line that runs down through there. Omasa has water line that runs on Piney Green, 17, and Drummer Kellum. So you'd be lying a water line right next to on Wasa's water line. Yes. I guess the question is why? Again, um, we see that as the growth corridor and what we want to be when it comes to the city is we want to, if somebody annexes into the city, we want to be able to say that we are your sole provider we were, will provide you the water, we will provide you the sewer. We want to be your one-stop shop. We want to uh, be the one that sends you your bill. And um, so as a city customer, you get your services from the city. Right, but they're not in the city. There's no, other than that one, there's no development. Those are all private residences. And then going up the other side is all private. Well, as you go up 17, again, there are a number of l larger tracks mm -hmm. that, um, again, are potential for development. And again, Any vacant land is potential for development. That doesn't mean people are going to develop it. I question spending money on stuff that you're just guessing the future. Well, you know, that's, that's certainly a, a valid a valid point, but then again, uh, you don't like to try to catch up to the future either. You like to plan ahead. No, but it could be built at the time it was developed, if it ever was developed. My, my concern is getting into a competition between mm -hmm. Owasa and City of Jacksonville as far as trying to see who gets to build which lines <coughs> where if you're already going to be running right next to each other. But you've got the advantage with the city that you've got the sewer and the water, whereas on Wasa can only offer water. In this area, that's correct. And I think one of the things to think about is we really missed the boat way back when out Ramsey Road across the street from Carolina Forest. If we'd had extra capacity built into that system, we could have that whole Carolina, Carolina plantation. plantation, which was the biggest miss that I've seen since I've been on the council. And He's driving out there, and there's tonneau houses. Uh, no, no, it was before I got there. It was uh, it was a management decision before you know. They, well, it was prior to us. They didn't have the capacity to offer, but if they had been out there ahead of the game a little bit when they did Carolina Forest, possibly you know we could have had. Well, they wanted to be annexed. But we couldn't provide the service. So. It was during our when we had the special order by consent with the state and mm -hmm. some other things. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a lot of concerns, and I look out at the Gum Branch and the uh, Shamrock Road area where half the people want to get on city water and half don't, and because they can't agree, then they can't get on because 
takes 100% for an annexation. So the only place building down a road like this is if you're there before the construction so that you can deal with a developer and not the individual homeowner. Uh, but again, I think there's a concern there. If you're going to go down, not just 17, but it comes back on the Piney Green effort because there's a bunch of places between 17 North and Piney Green now that will be isolated, if you will, that uh, was has got the water, but not the sewer. So, and I'm not sure what the answer is. I just know it, it's disturbing. I think the main concern is the cost. Mm -hmm. Who pays for it up front, waiting for it, the income to come back to us? How's that paid for up front? Bonds? <coughs> what? How does it get paid? Rate increase. Or versus a rate increase on city of Jacksonville now. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be the concern. Yes. Well, and again, that's why we're going to sit down and we're going to start doing some serious planning. And as we do that planning, uh, you know, we'll be bringing it to you to show you what what we what we see as the future and what we think it might take to serve uh, that future. And uh, certainly uh, a component of that can be you know, the, the financing and when do you build? Do you do it through uh, special assessment areas or do you uh, allow the developers to uh, uh, shoulder the cost of doing those extensions? That's well, and if you have it planned out in advance, our regulations actually allow us to require developers to overbuild facilities. So it may be that you can, if you're planning for an area, Instead of a developer putting in just a station that serves his development, the developer may have to come in and build a larger station that they can then recover cost on. Um, but if we don't have that planned out, it makes it very difficult for us to require those kind of things. Okay. So having a, a plan in advance actually enables us to do some things to where we may not have to shoulder that cost. I have a quick question. With any of that, Proposed potential future line extension going out Newburn Highway. Would it require any increase in pipe size size on the existing part of the system to be able to supply that? I don't know that yet. Um, one of the th I do know that one of the really quick things that we looked at. Um, that could boost pressure out in that area instead of upsizing a bunch of lines back towards town was to run uh, pick up um, I think a uh, larger water line over in the Commons and actually bring it down Empire you know Empire's got a small six eight inch line on it right now bring a larger line down Empire and tie it into this water that's that's out here in the Piney Green Road area right now. I think we looked at uh, maybe it comes down here and either goes here and ties in here or, or, or loops around like this. So, you know, those are just, there's any number of scenarios, but I, I doubt very seriously it's going to involve going back into, into town and uh, upsizing, uh, um, you know, something, something else. Another project um, is uh, that's under design is uh, a project with uh, Linwood and uh, Wilson. Uh, they're over in the Cardinal Village area and uh, Sioux Court over in the Northwoods area. This is another project with uh, some short runs of two inch water lines. Uh, we're almost uh, complete with the design. And uh, again, the reason we're doing this is uh, work order history. Uh, these, uh, there's been a lot of repairs, uh, leaks on those two inch lines. As a matter of fact, you go out and you can see all the patches in the road. So that's what brought this uh, project up and, and we hope to put that out for a bid here uh, Christmas or a little bit after Christmas. And it should be a quick hitter project. This is another one that I'll call under design. It's been under design for a while. Uh, and this is, 
a, a project where we would connect to Camp Lejeune over at uh, Iwo Jima Boulevard, their Iwo Jima Boulevard, right off of Lejeune Boulevard. And again, it's, it would be an emergency connection. It would only be used if, say, on the Camp Lejeune side, there was a water line break and pressure dropped really low. Uh, we would uh, open up a valve. We would uh, let the water uh, go to them, and uh, it would be metered. Likewise, if on our side we had pressure go, we had a big break, and uh, we needed to isolate uh, uh, part of the system, uh, we could get water from Camp Lejeune if uh, our pressure fell below the, the pressure that they could supply. This is a 50-50 split. Uh, in terms of uh, dollars, and I think we've allocated about $71,000 for this, and the design is, is by the base. They're taking the lead on this. And uh, it has been on, uh, I guess, our list for a number of years, and all I can say is that the reason it is is because they're working through their bureaucracy. When it comes to sewer, uh, you know, we just talked about water. In sewer, there's uh, one project, you, you can see, I think, six. There's an investigation phase, uh, one project in the investigation phase, one, uh, four in the design phase, and one under construction. And uh, one that uh, is uh, under design, well, no, I'll take that back. The design's complete. Construction's supposed to begin in February. Uh, is uh, a project in our ongoing effort to try to uh, take inflow and infiltration out of our system. And the project uh, actually incorporates another uh, CIP project that we had on the books. It was called Park Stratford uh, Sewer. And uh, the Park Stratford Sewer uh, was a project where when it was budgeted, we budgeted a complete replacement of that sewer line based upon you know, what we were hearing. When we went out and did investigations, however, what we found, found, found was that uh, there was only a few point repairs needed and some lining that was needed. And so we greatly reduced what was budgeted as a $1.2 million project down to something, you know, probably $100,000 or so. And so we incorporated that into the overall project. The overall project is, uh, our, our estimate is about $750,000, uh, and the work spread across the city. And this particular project is uh, the result of um, inventory of uh, problems that utilities maintenance has found through uh, televisioning, smoke testing, so on and so forth. It's also the result of uh, when we go out and we start to do our annual streets uh, resurfacing project, we go and we start looking at the infrastructure because we, we try our best to make sure that the water and sewer underneath that street is good before we pave it. We don't have a hundred percent hit or a hundred percent success, but you know we're, 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 we have a pretty high success rate because I don't know, just invariably something's going to break that it shouldn't have broken. But uh, through the streets project, we found a number of locations where point repairs and lining needed to be done. And uh, then lastly, uh, Pete pulled together a spreadsheet that showed uh, some of our lifts or lift stations and showed which ones had uh, a really high flow to them after it rained. And so what we did was we went upstream of the ones that were the, the highest offenders and started looking at the outfall lines to those uh, particular pump stations and actually found some locations on those large outfall lines where we needed to do some, some work. Uh, I think mostly manhole repair, but work nonetheless. And so we put together a pretty decent sized project that's going to incorporate all those things, lining point repairs and manhole repairs. And again, that we're expecting to get started that in February. Western Regional Sewer Project, we've talked uh, about this uh, a lot over the, the past few years. This is a project that you may recall involves uh, building a regional pump station that would receive uh, flow from an out 
a line that starts pretty much near Carolina Forest and works its way down through Williamsburg to the pump station and then pumps through the countryside over to the wastewater treatment plant. That project um, is um, at the point where we just about completed all the surveying for it. And our engineer has actually started working on uh, some of the, or has started the design work for where we actually tie into the wastewater treatment plant, the headworks, where the bar screens are, the aerated grit chamber. And that design is at about 50%. So um, the design on the rest of it uh, should be starting after the first of the year because again, the, the surveys are pretty much complete. That's a big chunk of wetlands to go through there. Are you going to go directionally? Under directional, it? yes. The locations where there's wetlands, we're directional drilling. It's a, it's a pretty good run. Okay. Another project mm -hmm. uh, is this is one that has been was bid back in February. It's called the Belfort Sewer Upgrade, and you can see that we've identified the uh, bottleneck. There's a small, there's an eight inch line that goes under Bell Fork and you see it's got three lines coming to it, one of which is an 18 inch. <laughs> and so uh, we actually received bids on this in February um, and the bid came in at about $325,000. But part of the contractor's responsibility is to develop what we call a shoring plan. He's actually gonna have to bore under Bell Fork Road but his bore pit, you know, he has to dig a pit to get down low to set a machine so he can bore underneath the road. His bore pit is going to be so close to Belfort Road, which is a state road, that he's going to have to put shoring up to make sure his, the walls of his excavation stay and don't cave in. Well, because that's right in and adjacent to the NCDOT right-of-way, that shoring plan has to be approved by DOT. Make a long story short, the, contract, the contractor's been through, uh, he's on his third submittal. Uh, we're down to two comments, and we're hoping that this last uh, submittal will take care of it and we can get the project underway. Isn't this that area that floods when it rains? Yeah. It That's fall. right there, isn't it? In front of the old... Yeah. Um, In front of the furniture, furniture place? It. Yeah. Is that going to help this? Uh, this is sewer. This sewer is not going to help it at all, is it? Not the flooding, no. <laughs> so is 300 and some thousand just across the road, basically, is yes. what we're talking about? Yes. It's, it's a larger line, and it is, it is bore. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's, it's a tough bore. Uh, I've forgotten. I think uh, it, I want to say the, the bore price on this one was three dollars $400 a foot. At some point, are you going to have to close yeah, the road? Under the road. Because they're going to go under. Because they're going to go under. When the showing fills. What? Yeah, when, they, when, when, when that pit fills feels. with water, they'll be out of there. Uh, what size pipe are you replacing it with? Uh, I should have jotted that down. It's at least an 18. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. I think it's actually a 24, and they pick yeah. up some of the other, yeah. they have to run adjacent. They're going to use yeah. 12 or 2 too. inch pipes. <laughs> <laughs> that I just, still wouldn't work well. I, don't, I just don't remember. Uh, the 24 that's marked there, is that the one that comes all the way up Bell Fork and not that little loop? That is associated with the new pump station that's that a, we there's installed. There's a station right there. The, the old pump station was somewhere down in this area. Yeah, it was. And we installed the new pump station here, and that 24 inches, I think we actually installed that with the new station to pick up the flow from the old station. So... Most likely. I just don't remember it. It's probably a 24 that's going underneath the road. Okay, because I saw that 6 on the bottom corner there, and I thought, wait, you can't have a 24 and a 6. That'd be no. really weird. Yeah. But not unusual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, another project that is under design is um, at the LTS, the land treatment system, the wastewater land treatment system. We are, are planning to replace an old non-functioning, what I'll call a, a mechanical rake type screen, autom autom automatic type screen, but it's, it's old and it doesn't work and it's undersized. 
that project is at about uh, to, we're going to replace it with what's called a step screen which is a screen that's going to be just like the screens that are have been put out there over the you know the past several years um, at the at the head work so we're gonna we're gonna put back uh, a screen that's going to match the other screens that are there uh, we're also going to uh, do some work for the existing screens that are being retained to provide heat so they don't have a tendency to freeze. Sometimes uh, we have freezing problems, and we're going to make electrical improvements there. Uh, the work has been slowed a little bit because we're trying to coordinate this with the work to tie the new, remember the Western Regional Pump Station in Force Main? We're trying to coordinate those two projects to make sure that when we tie the new 36 inch line in that, uh, you know, we've, we've accounted for it when it comes to this, you know, setting up for the screen. So that slowed this project a little bit, but we're making progress. I think we've about got all the coordination stuff done. Solids dewatering bed. This is one that I'll call or st say we're still in the investigation phase. Uh, this is uh, where uh, we have a solids dewatering bed, but it's, it's undersized um, and it, it's, it's not an ideal situation. What, what this uh, solids dewatering bed would be used for is when Pete goes out and sucks all the grease out of those wet wells with his back truck, he needs some place to, to put them out, let them dry out before he takes it to the landfill. And uh, so what we're doing is we're looking at uh, two or three different possibilities of how to do this, and I'll t talk, show you one that we're sort of considering. And it's not exactly a solids bed. It looks like a, a roll-off box, but what that roll-off box has in it is a filter material. It has it on the sides and on the bottom. And what you do is you put your sludge in there, um, your grease, and uh, that uh, filter media lets the water run down to the bottom and then you uh, pull it off the bottom through these things. What you do is you connect uh, a hose with a cam lock to it and then you take it to a sewer manhole or some sort of receptacle, a sewer receptacle, and you drain that water off. And then what you can do is uh, with a roll-off truck, uh, haul it off to the landfill and open it up and dump the grease out. Um, what you see there are a couple of pictures. The one on the left is the uh, back truck actually dumping into the box. One on the right is uh, the dewatered uh, grease, sludge, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, once the, all the, 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 once a great percentage of the liquid has drained off. This particular uh, a uh, 20 cubic yard, one of these, costs about $27,000, which uh, is not bad. Uh, we are, I am also sort of thinking about this, because we don't have a roll-off truck uh, to haul it to the landfill, where maybe we could dump it on, uh, you know, we could load it up and then dump it on an adjacent slab where something could scoop the dewatered sludge up and then put it in a truck to be hauled off to the landfill. So that's one of the options we're, we're thinking about. This project is one where we're supposed to do design, I think, uh, this year, and uh, we'll try to get the construction in before the end of the year, if we construct. And then lastly, I think y'all talked a fair amount about this at your last meeting, um, so I'm not going to... Uh, say anything other than we are scheduled to meet with the regulators the, uh, in Wilmington next Friday, a week from tomorrow, to talk about this technology because it would be new to the state and sort of see what route we might need to take to uh, implement this at the LTS. So that's the 17, uh, the 16 projects that uh, are active. And what's coming up next is um, in December you're going to we're going to be back talking to you again about capital projects. We're going to be talking to you about the uh, FY17 through 21 uh, time frame and we're going to get started in December by uh, telling you about projects that are already in the, the current five-year window from 16 to 20 that are going to be moving into the active phase in 17. 
So we're going to go through those projects. And then um, in January, what we're going to do is we're going to talk with you about projects that staff has brought forward, water and sewer projects that uh, management has tentatively said, yes, you can slide it into the window. And we're going to tell you about, about those. And um, then in, uh, lastly, in February, what we're going to do is you know, we will have worked with management, we will have worked with y'all, and then we're going to come back with any changes that have occurred, um, you know, from January to February in terms of uh, estimated cost for a capital project. If it moved somewhere in the time frame, let's say instead of uh, 17, it got moved to 18, we'll talk to you about that, and uh, we'll uh, tell you if any of the scope changes. And what will happen is council should get their draft of the CIP around the end of January, 1st of February. That's usually the way it goes. And uh, we'll be uh, seeking your support uh, before council approves it, of course. And uh, um, it's just sort of like we've done in, in the past years. So what we'll be doing as staff is, of course, what I just described, we'll continue working to refine the projects. We'll uh, look at uh, funding available and work towards presenting a draft to council and also uh, presenting you with the projects over the coming months, too. So with that, I think I'm done. You want to be All right. What's the difference between the uh, that blue frog system and the uh, polluting aerators? Um, they look the same to me. I mean. They sort of do. Um, what the um, the blue frog folks say is that instead of creating a whole bunch of agitation, throwing the water up in the air and, uh, and, and agitating, you know, the dickens mm -hmm. out of it. They sort of send the water out sort of in a laminar, laminar means. And, what the, and then it circulates. And what that allows to happen is it allows the uh, better reduction in the sludge, you know, the suspended sludge than your typical aerator. It, 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 it allows for the microbes to better feed on the sludge and reduce it. Um, and apparently they have, um, you know, uh, people that swear by that. It's, 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 you know, from a technical standpoint, it's almost like uh, combining a floating area, floating aerator with uh, a technology called a upflow sludge blanket. Um, and um, it's an interesting concept. Do you have any idea how much better it is, like a percentage-wise, or? I don't know. You've been involved with them more than I. They, they didn't. I think originally they came out and gave us a percentage that they thought they could reduce it by. Mm -hmm. I don't recall what that percentage was. Um, but, you know, it, Pete and... Well, you didn't make it, but William and Jill and I went and toured a few plants that used it, and you know, I have to say, both both of the plants we went to were believers. And you know, I may have told the story before, but one of the gentlemen told us they actually had to drag the aerator out into the lagoon with a tractor because the sludge was too thick; it wouldn't even float, and it worked. So it actually reduced his sludge from, I think his lagoons were somewhere between five and six feet deep. Mm -hmm. And his sludge was somewhere between four and four and a half feet. Mm -hmm. And it reduced down to about 12 to 18 inches or something. Mm -hmm. And that was over the course of about a year period, if I remember correctly. Okay. Or a much smaller. But it was a much smaller facility. It was about a, it was about a third of the size of the one lagoon we're looking to do. So there's okay. still uh, it, was a, it, it was, you know, 200,000 gallon or 300,000 gallon <coughs> a day plant. 
and one of the trains we're looking at is about two million gallons a day. Do they have any installed at ones the size? No. We have. We would be the largest. Is that one of the things that DEQ is looking at? Is the oxygen because of that issue? Well, it, I don't know. I mean, the dissolved oxygen is certainly one of the things that we are um, required by permit. But, and I think Greg did some prim, uh, preliminary calculations, and they well, need the dissolved oxygen. Yeah. It's the other parts. What's interesting is even though they treat it as a technology that's somewhat different than a, a standard floating aerator that you know throws the water up in the air, the calculations that they use to uh, get it uh, permitted in other locations are the same calculations you use for your standard floating aerator. And so we're going to go talk to the state a little bit about that and say, you know, it looks different than a floating aerator, but they've done some oxygen transfer tests, and those oxygen transfer tests uh, show that it transfers oxygen roughly the same as a, as a floating aerator. And so they uh, use those same calculations to get them permitted. Is that going to work here? I would remind everybody also that the smaller examples that they visited also held theirs longer. longer. The contact time was greater. Yes. That is probably the piece that still concerns us the most. Yeah, that is the, that, that is the, the, the thing that we're, we're Very attention time. paying attention to. If I may comment on the overall presentation, which I want to thank Greg for giving and thank Wally for entertaining our interest and concerns. And I don't view this as being an adversarial thing, so it's a matter of we express what we're interested in. If you don't have the answer, that's fine. I know you'll get it back to us, but I hope that our interest helps you make a better CIP for the council. And again, I don't view this as we're trying to play gotcha, but we're trying to understand. And I want to thank both of you two for answering our questions as best you could tonight. And in, 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 in saying that, um, one last request, the, the I and I information where you said you figured out several areas that you want to do some, some work on and the manholes and all that, when you know what areas those are going to be, we you be presenting a, a map of those Well, we, we know. I just, quite honestly, I couldn't get the map together in, uh, in time. I, I, I can do that, though. That would be uh, wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It, it give us all warnings when we're getting ready to drive around or something. Sure, sure. That Maybe we could attach it as um, an attachment to your water and sewer advisory report for next month. Thank you. Greg, is that all you have for right now? Well, if you want me to talk some more, I'll be <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm done. <laughs> Do we have any old business? business all right new business you're not going to like it because i've got a few things Does anybody want to ask any questions about the water and sewer system report from pete i guess you would handle it wouldn't you one of us would give you that <laughs> <laughs> you've got it here in the, in the packet if anybody has any questions about it okay we don't <clears throat> at the planning board Monday night we received information that on October 20th the City Council approved the map amendment that I <clears throat> on Piney Green Road that went from a residential to a commercial establishment Randy you recall <laughs> church I think it was church. <laughs> <laughs> also on your report here they have several things that have come up 2460 Gum Branch Road, they've had a conversation with the River of Life Church to construct a 65,000 square foot church on, at Gum Branch and Western Boulevard on the corner there. The Lutheran Church held a meeting to discuss the process for a new church site with the planning board. Moe's Southwest Grill got a certificate of occupancy 
inside the mall. I don't know what that is, but it's Southwest Grill. I don't know what type of food. Academy Sports met, and they're going to put up a proposed 62,000 foot retail establishment adjacent there to Western Boulevard, across from the office park right there on the corner of Henderson and Western. And then West uh, Williamsburg Plantation is they've changed people over there and the future development of the remaining commercial and residential portions have been discussed through Parker and Associates with the planning department. All right. This meeting on Monday night, we had a special use permit was asked for a cell phone tower on Ramsey Road 900, which is across from Carolina Fort. The road comes out of Carolina Forest. You know, there's a housing, I don't know the name of it. There's a housing project right across the street there on Ramsey. Anyways, it's going to be next to it. It's on a little over two acre. And it will be not only for U.S. Cellular, but they're going to sell spots for other cellular companies to use. <clears throat> they rezoned from residential to commercial at 2739 Richlands and 2757 Richlands. I have a map here if anybody wants to see it. It's next to, you have Pet, you have Pet Smart here, then you got the bread company, and it's going to be these two lots, this one and this one. If anybody would like to see this a little closer up, I'll be glad to pass around. There's the other one there. <clears throat> it's going to be before you get to Murray's there. You know, anybody want to see this? Tom? Diane, anybody? Okay. That was approved, and it will go to council at Edom. James, did they require that uh, cell tower to be camouflaged like the one they put in at the uh, golf course? Yeah, uh, it's going to be a 150-foot tower. They, so they didn't require and it to look like be, a pine tree, huh? And, <laughs> yes, just, and they're sure. going to have to have to make it with a red light on top of it. <laughs> that was one thing they did not put in the plan, and they called for it. So they have to put a red light on top, Dish. as per the Marine Corps helicopter. <laughs> all right, moving on here. On Wassa, I know you all want to hear that. We had a meeting Tuesday night. And mostly what we discussed here was they're going with a new financial software. They have come here to the J Jacksonville. They have gone to New Hanover, three, four other places, and they're coming up with a new one that will allow, they're going to have screens in their vehicles, like what the police department has, so they can send people, they can see where their, their, car, their pickups and all like that are. They'll be able to send them to wherever, you know, whichever one's closest to a call. And they, it's going to be about a year and a half before they get everything up and rolling on it. Northwest plant, the final payment, there has been some problems with it there. The plant is run over the time limit and they are being fined so much on it. Well, right now they're in mediation with it. And what they're going to, I believe, end up doing, they, they haven't quite finished with it, but they, they owe them some money. And they're just going to say, well, you owe us for being late on your contract, and we owe you money. They're just going to knock, you know, it's going to be written off. Dixon, the water plant, they got iron problems there. So they put in that what's happened, according to them, is they... They got an aerator in there that's doing some, putting some oxygen in, and it's stopping, it's causing their filters to get stopped up and all like that. So they've come back, and it's a design problem, so they've come back and had it redesigned, and they just got the bids in on Tuesday. I don't know where Hairbank, Hair, 
What is that, Jill? Harbinger? Harbinger? Yeah, I've Carolina. never heard of it. Anyways, they bid $448,000 to fix it. EOJ, here in Jacksonville, 868000 Jacksonville Mechanics, one million fourteen thousand, and a man out of Wallace bid a million ninety-five thousand. They're going to go back over these bids to see if the four hundred thousand one is got everything that the million-dollar one had. If not, they're going to call for, I believe, some more bids to be sent out for it. Uh, okay, a new bank. Down in Holly Ridge, Bank of North Carolina, uh, excuse me, Bank of America closed up. So, and it's now Coastal Bank, and that's where people go in to pay their Anwasa bill. So they changed banks down there so they can go in now to Coastal Bank and pay their bill. Uh, we are changing our Anwasa meetings to every other month <clears throat> we will have one in december but then it'd be february april june august october and december 2016. Uh, question for y'all what is going to happen to the contract that we have with the county on the sir going out to Burton Park because they're fixed the uh, Anwasa's got you know running their pipes down there or, at, or have already are we going to lose that the Burton Park will be redirected into the county line it'll go to their new Northwest so plant. we'll end up with the, what was it 300 and no it was, I think Burton Park's total permitted was a hundred and 115,000 gallons per day or something. Is it 100? Okay. Something I, I like don't that. remember the exact. But that'll be that'll be turned to, um, and we've actually um, turned the permits over to Omwasa already. That's been done for probably six, eight months now. We gave them the infrastructure. Right. And we gave them the pump station. Well, it, it was theirs to begin with. Well, well they were yeah, talking about they, it the... was Omwasa's, and it was the county's, and then Omwasa's, and they transferred it to us. And we maintained it, and then with the new plant, we turned it back over to Mwasa. They were talking about the out to the landfill. Happened to get you might aware of it. They said it would cost thirty thousand dollars. They they would not be paying the city for using our system to get that water out of the landfill. It's going through. Where is it going to go yeah, through? Uh, yeah, the, the, the leachate um, is going to, it's going to be directed to their northwest plant. It is. Uh, right now, uh, I think the way it works is it ties into the uh, Burton Park Force Main. Right. It just ties in uh, on uh, was Fire Tower Road and just uh, goes on to our wastewater treatment plant. And what they're going to do is they're going to reverse the flow back to Burton Park and uh, and then send it on to the uh, Northwest plant. I see where all my papers disappeared to here. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? I would just like to point out one thing in your water and sewer system report that may not be obvious unless you compare it to last month's. Um, the rain that we had at the beginning of October where we had higher flows, and of course we had, I don't remember the total for October, but I know it was over seven inches. Um, we lost essentially two feet in our storage lagoons over the month of October. So just... You know, one one bad month can have consequences with higher flows and not being able to spray and, you know, and then direct rainfall into the lagoons. So we're, our, our lagoons at the end of, a, or beginning of November, were about two feet higher, a little over two feet higher than what they were at the end of September. You must be praying for sunshine. <laughs> 
at least not rain. I know. <laughs> this week hasn't helped you, has it? No, at least not rain. It doesn't have to be sunshine, but just not just rain. Just not rain. That's yeah. right. Frank Sanders was at our meeting. He said, say hello to everybody. He's gone. He's working part-time for Omwasa now. We, we're going to have to keep up. <laughs> You're going to have to get a book to tell how everybody's switching around. <laughs> Nobody has anything else. One question I would like to ask. How much problem would it be on Greg's presentation to get copies of, like, what is up on the screen? Those, is that hard to do to get? We can't see that or yeah. this one. We, we really can't. That was bigger, but that one's clearer, but it's still, yeah. the older you get, the less you can see. <laughs> so you just want a paper copy of the maps that we're doing? Yeah, something like that. The trees, but we just can't okay. see that. Yeah. That's good to know. That could be done. We'd appreciate it. Anybody have anything else then? Okay, we'll accept the motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. All in favor? One, oh, one more thing, don't forget the December 10th Too meeting. Late. Too late. <laughs> uh, <laughs> December 10th meeting, 5.30. You don't forget it. I, I about <laughs> forgot tonight. And I'm sure we'll get something from the city on the one at the beginning of December. <clears throat> we'll have it with the council. I will be coming back from Raleigh that evening, so I'm not sure if I'll be back exactly at that time, but I will do my darndest. Where are you going? I'm going to be up in Raleigh. How are you doing? Oh, okay. Working, sir. You're going out to see your grandbaby again.